All right, here's the fuselage. Here's the detail on the wing saddle. You can see the aluminum uh, inserts for the wing bolts and the recess for the DB9 connector. Canopy area here. Pop this guy off. You, know, you have to do your own hold down system for the, uh, the canopy. You know, maybe just a carbon rod glued in. Uh, obviously this fuse is all carbon so um, it is not 2.4 friendly so you'll need to run external whiskers. Here's the nose. Um, it looks like you will have to trim this back a little bit because the, the, the front edge of this nose is uh, like they just rough trimmed it out of the mold. So you're probably going to have to cut this back maybe 3 or 4 millimeters to get a clean edge. And you are going to have to install your own uh, motor mount and you're going to have to make your own motor mount also. So again, servo tray is not included. You have to do your own motor mount and uh, a ballast system if you want a ballast system. Here are the cables for the pull pull. They're just taped temporarily. This is how it comes from the factory. They're taped temporarily on top of the fuselage. You'll have to run, the, run these inside the fuselage. And here's the uh, pylon for the elevator. And I don't know if you'll be able to see inside there um, the bell cranks. There's two bell cranks in here that are pinned in um, for the rudder and the elevator. And uh, the rudder, there's the push rod with the L bend. It's already pre done for you. So um, very easy to install the rudder and the single bolt that holds the rudder down. The, uh, the bolt goes through the bottom of the fuse into the rudder post. Single bolt for the uh, elevator. I don't know if you can see up close, but the finish of the fuselage is really nice. It's pretty glossy. And uh, another, another unique feature of this model is it's seamed on the side, which you don't see too often. Normally the seam on most fuselages is up here, but this one is seamed on the side. And that's probably because they have a pretty deep recess here for the uh, DB9 connector. And also, that'll probably allow them to get a lot of these details up here on the, on the tail and the pylon and the rudder. So that's the fuselage. Take a look at the elevator. There's the center of the elevator. You can see a, a little molded detail here that matches the um, pylon on the fuselage. Uh, alignment pins hole for the bolt, control horn, gap seal tape, pretty big elevator, should have lots of authority. There's the elevator and rudder. Detail of where it mates to the fuselage, a little alignment pin, dowel with threads uh, for the hold down, um, pre-installed control horn, center hinged rudder and gap seal on both sides. Okay, let's move on to a wingtip. So here's the wingtip. Ailerons obviously go all the way out to the edge. Try to give you some detail of the root here. You can see the root rib, um, wire channel, joiner, carbon alignment pins, tape gap seal, and here's the slot, the pre-cut slot for the uh, control rod and your linkage would go, or your horn would go in here. You have to cut the slot for the horn and glue that in. Flip it over, you see the servo bay with the, uh, the wire. And these are basically the only stripes you get on the, the bottom of the wing. So there's a the wing tip. Alright, center panel. Uh, two bolts, flush mount. You see there's a little molded feature here uh, to mate with the fuselage. And a little molded feature here to mate with the back of the fuselage tape gap seals again, same slots for the linkage, and I don't know if you can see some of the wing root detail here. 
and I don't have much room to swing this around. Flip it over. Recess for the DB9, you can see the wires in there. Um, recesses for the aluminum uh, inserts in the fuse. Very small uh, servo pocket, so you're not going to be able to get big servos in here. Um, you know, if you want to use like a, uh, like a, a metal uh, cased wing servo like MKS, KST, Bluebird, or even a JR398, something like that, it's not going to fit in here. The best fit for this is going to be uh, MKS 6100, uh, Bluebird CB1005, something similar, Airtronics 809, something along those lines, um, wire in there and a uh, root rib there's a center panel and we have the nice Ultima logo which is on all the models so there's a center panel give you a quick look at what's included with the kit two sets of joiners rods for making your linkages on your wings looks like uh, steel wing bolts I don't know maybe you could replace these with aluminum or titanium and save a few grams if you're crazy about saving as much weight as possible really thin servo covers these are paper thin um, yeah just again for weight they're made out of carbon for those your standard DB9 connector here then you get all the control horns for your wing really thin G10 fiberglass machine control horns again to save weight little tiny bolt right here I don't know if you can see that looks like a three millimeter bolt for the rudder plastic nylon and a four millimeter bolt flush mount uh, for the elevator. So it's kind of a close look at, at all the parts of the Ultima. So initial thoughts uh, about the Ultima. I think uh, Dennis and his team did an uh, amazing job um, designing, developing, uh, and manufacturing this airplane. Um, if you check out the, the link that uh, shows some images from his shop and um, the, the manufacturing process um, and I'll put that in the um, description box you can see that the molds are actually aluminum they're CNC aluminum and that's that's not very um, standard for let's say F3J or F5J models usually the masters are milled um, out of some material and then the molds are pulled off the masters um, with you know standard epoxy so to actually go to the trouble of, of machining the the final mold is is pretty amazing and a ton of work um, machining the cores for these wings and tails must take a, a lot of time and a lot of work um, just the actual machine time and all the parts it might be a couple hours or more it might be hours and hours I don't know and the jigs needed to ensure everything is accurate and when you when you put the foam down on the the CNC machine um, and flip it over again and, and machine the other side it's it's just a ton of work a ton of work and you know the Ultima is not cheap um, it's it's a pretty expensive model and you know maybe you're gonna say oh it's really expensive and there's no servo tray and there's no ballast and this and that but at the same time you know it's a ton of work. It is a ton of work, and I have some experience um, building models and um, working with composites and other other industries and making molds in other industries. And I I know for a fact it, it's a ton. Of, it would have been would have been a ton of work to make those aluminum molds. A, a ton of expense. Machining the cores is a lot of work for the production models. So, you know, honestly, I think it's a good value. I think it's a good value. Um, so they, they did a really good job and the design looks really good and um, I can't wait to fly one I hope I get to fly one soon uh, you know 38 39 ounce 4 meter sailplane I mean that would be like my DLG dream right there or HLG I should say because I love hand launching big models and I think hand launching this model you know without even running the motor would, would, would be awesome so that's something I really look forward to doing 
Um, okay. From an end user perspective, I would say that the Ultima is a serious competition model and should be considered by guys who are looking for a model to um, compete with. I don't know if it would make a great sport model. Um, I'm, I mean, it would, but it's not going to be as durable um, as something else. Um, I think the Ultima was designed and, and developed to be as light as possible and to use the most minimalistic equipment to get the task done in F5J. Um, so, you know, when you build this thing, you gotta think, it, think of it like it's a DLG, like you're building a DLG. You're gonna put DLG um, servos in the ailerons, you're gonna put really small servos in the flaps, you're gonna put really small servos in the fuselage, you're gonna be doing linkages in the wings like a DLG, um, you're gonna be running a very small um, battery pack for the motor, you know, maybe 800 milliamp at the most, 600 milliamp, you know, maybe even 500 milliamp to power the motor and your servos. And it was designed and developed with all that stuff in mind, so it is a hardcore competition model, and I think it would be well suited for someone that's looking for a model like that. Um, I think there's a bunch of other models on the market that would be suited for guys that want something to go sport flying with or an, a better all-around model. Um, so keep that in mind when you when you look at the Ultima and when you're you know comparing it to other airplanes out there. Um, I think durability is the big question, and again that goes back to the purpose of the airplane. I think it was you know as I said it was designed strictly to meet a goal for F5J, right? So keep that in mind when you think about the durability. I think the fuselage is fine. Um, the wings, not as durable as, let's say, a, a Electric Perfection or a, a Optimus or an Electra or something like that, or um, a Kappa or Onyx. Um, definitely not as durable. Um, I don't think they're super fragile, but great care will have to be taken handling, um, transporting, even on the bench while you're building. Um, so yes, I would say the wings are, are fragile from my perspective. Maybe not, you know, not from a flying perspective, but just from everyday handling and use. All in all, I think it's really an amazing airplane. I think it's going to set the standard of things to come in the next couple of years in F5J. I really hope some of this stuff trans transitions over to F3J, like the solid core wings. Um, I'd, I'd really like to see um, weights come down slightly in F3J and uh, while keeping the same strength. And I, th I think it will. I think we might see we might see that happen. And I'm really glad that uh, Dennis sort of pushed the boundaries of uh, manufacturing with this airplane. Really, really an awesome model. Uh, can't wait to fly one. I'm going to be building this one for a customer. I don't think he'll let me fly it, but hopefully I'll be able to build my own soon. Um, so that's it. Check out the Ultima. Um, it, um, go to flightcomp.com uh, for more details, and I'll put a bunch of links in the description of the video uh, so you can see uh, the manufacturer's website, RC Group's threads, um, the pictures from the mold, developing and designing the model and, and, and uh, laying up parts in the molds and blah, blah, blah. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one.